Good evening, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading report for December 9th, 2012. We are still in bullish normal conditions at 56 out of 100 on weekly RSI 14. Using the 10 day MDX at 87 out of 100, so slightly overbought. Percent stretch relative to the 200 day moving average is yellow bullish at 3.19%, so we're 1.19% above the uh, edge of sideways. Slope of the 50 improved slightly to minus 0.21% although it remains red bearish. ADX 14 is at 11.9 very weak uh, trending market so like no trend at all. Uh, when it goes back above 15 we'll be looking to see is it bulls or bears and then that'll lay the groundwork for potentially a decent intermediate term move. ATR percentage is back under 1 at 0.99%, so low end of normal. No change in the blended month 3 balancing, still the same holdings. Uh, next reevaluation on or about 1 January. ETF2, the theoretical model, is exposed at, point eight, uh, at 80%. Excuse me. Model portfolio itself is at 80%. Uh, the trade of the week this week is actually not a trade at all, but it is a 20-minute discussion combination practical exercise about critical thinking, reflective thinking, and decision making. Uh, it was a form of this was presented at the most recent IITM Super Trader Workshop and uh, got good marks uh, from the traders. So I decided to share that with you. Uh, quick look at the uh, blended month rebalancing holdings, still uh, mostly on buy positions in the 13. Um, it's all overseas right now, Asia less Japan, Australia and the Euro-Asia blend. Um, the U.S. bringing up the, uh, the bottom, especially technology week right now. In the 26 portfolio, uh, same story, uh, it's the globals and emerging markets. And um, financials are really the first time we see any strength in the U.S and uh, technology lagging even behind the commodity indexes. Market health check, vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days of look back. Horizontal purple is the swing high at 147 and some change. Uh, the blue river in the middle is the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus one. Uh, thick green is a 10 period moving average. Uh, thin red is the 50. You can see it rolling over much like the river. Uh, the solid red is the 200-day moving average in the area below the curve is, uh, you know, bearish. Thick black in the middle is a 30-period regression line. And the outer black is the channel formed by the maximum excursion from the regression line during the look-back period. Uh, price uh, rests right now on the uh, top side of the river at the conjunction of the uh, Bollinger Band plus one the 50-day moving average and the 10-day moving average after a uh, two-week, almost three-week bounce off this low that dipped into the 200. So really, it's at uh, it's at a decision point here. It's got to get through resistance at 144, that purple line. If it gets through there, it's got to get through resistance at about 147, and it really has to get above that and close uh, for this to have any kind of bullish move at all. The 5% pullback from the swing high gets us down around 140. Uh, near the bottom of the river, and then the 10% would be down around 133-ish. Uh, the jaws of PPO are still pointing up, although it's uh, declining a little bit here over the percent price price oscillator, and uh, we're overbought right now. Uh, this is a natural place for hesitation and a pullback to the bottom of the channel uh, in the river to 138, but you can make the argument equally as well that it can get to 147. Um, the big red candles during the look-back period here uh, are troublesome. ETF2 regional report, uh, we're at 80% invested, 20% cash in the theoretical model because two of the ten are on cash, and it's the two weakest are, uh, IL, uh, well, we have ILF is weak, and, uh, and uh, NASDAQ, both are on uh, moving average filter signals for uh, for cash. Um, EFA is at uh, 
63 on a relative strength is better than the U.S. at 51, decisively so. Uh, so it's the globals over the U.S. U.S. indices, the strongest is MDY at 53, followed by large caps at 51, small caps at 49, and then technology, very weak on weakness in Apple at 42. Uh, two strongest sectors are Europe and Asia less Japan. The two weakest are uh, the NASDAQ and uh, U.S. small caps at 49. World market model, it's anything other than the U.S. You can see the weakness in U.S. tech, strength in Asia less Japan, anywhere in Asia except China, anywhere in Europe, uh, Mexico strong here. Um, gold and silver gave back a little bit this week. Uh, we're still we're seeing weakness across the board except for financials and industrials. Top uh, 30 ETFs uh, using the uh, blended monthly look back strength. We have uh, U.S. home construction, mostly then globals uh, and natural gas. And uh, we don't really get down to anything strong in the U.S. until we see um, uh, the health care uh, sector spider and really that's it and then uh, the consumer staple sector spider otherwise it's uh, the story continues to be the globals uh, Dow 30 strength is in Bank of America JP Morgan Travelers Pfizer and Home Depot um, kind of the old reliables and all the producers are at the bottom uh, Hewlett Packard continues to suffer although it had a bit of a tactical bounce this uh, past week. Intel, DuPont, Microsoft, AT&T, Alcoa, United Health, IBM, McDonald's, all of these in cash positions. Can't really make the argument for uh, strength in the U.S. until these guys turn it around. ETF liquidity, um, the VIX uh, has been suffering, uh, which is good for the long side. Um, but again, if, uh, if it holds at the top of the river where it is right now, then uh, the VIX should uh, should start to come back to fruition, particularly as you start seeing the gamesmanship in Washington, D.C. Okay, we're going to shift now to the daily report. Looking at the gap stat, uh, gap down has occurred 12 times in the last 30 days, 4 and 8. Um, 8 of those 12 times, the gap down has reversed to close higher for a follow-through of 0.39. 4 times, it has, uh, the gap down has continued to fail for a minus 0.78. Um, 18 times, the market has gapped up, and it's an exactly even split between a gap up and then reverse to close lower, or a gap up and continue to go higher. Uh, so that's really kind of a toss-up. We have uh, Latin America on a uh, short signal in overreaction. You can see how the volatility has come out of the market here. Um, ADX continues to, to decline almost down around 10 now, but uh, bulls and bears are equally split. Um, channeling signal in natural gas, 551W in gold, and then those symbols, gold, oil, materials, um, Blended commodities and silver all auto framing it better than two to one. And you can see a handful of dojis in the Dow and no patterns. Um, and then the Max Payne range compressions, the top five being uh, Microsoft, AT&T, IBM, DuPont, Exxon, Mobil. Uh, none of them have weak RSI 2 scores. Um, Microsoft, Cisco, and Elko were the big losers. Uh, so therefore, Microsoft, because it's so oversold relative to the rest of the Dow, that becomes uh, an interesting play for me. Uh, I'm interested in Bank of America on continuation. You can see how it's outperforming uh, across the board across uh, compared to its peers. Uh, anytime Alco is under 10, I'm interested in it. It was a big loser on fr Friday and trading at 850 with a 3.2 frog quality number. Inside the ETFs, there's a, a natural gas is channeling, but no other patterns, a few more dojis. Um, you can see quite a few test out well on the auto framer reward to risk, gold, silver, oil, blended commodities, and uh, basic uh, industries, materials. Um, the 30-day regression line basically flat, 
and holding at the top of this local support at 143. Uh, it's gotten back to the six month average. Uh, it's had a two standard deviation move uh, on the, on the um, slope stat, uh, getting all the way back to uh, the six month average. It's made a one and a half standard deviation move on the, on the percent stretch. So this is a natural place for it to find resistance. The last time it, it got here, it was a slight pullback uh, and go. But the previous time before that, it was a big smackdown. So um, equally likely for it to come back to 136 as it is to go to 149. Um, you can see that reflected on the z-scores of the regression line slopes. Everything is exactly back to flat. And you can see price at the very top of the river and um, the, the river starting to flatten out. This is perfect moment of indecision while the world watches to see if Washington can get its act together. This favors the short-term tactical trader. Uh, you see S&P at the top of its river, uh, so is uh, small caps. Gold has dropped out of the river, but starting to hook back up. So 165, in my view, is an attractive price with a support at uh, 160. Uh, treasuries slightly trending upwards, and if we see weakness in the equities, of course, Treasury is going to do well. A handful of tactical charts for reference. Uh, the defensive plays in the Dow doing better than um, uh, the S&P. Uh, you can see the great big pullback here in all of the commodities. Um, and that starts making them attractive on a swing basis again. More reference charts. And that's everything I want to cover on the weekend report. This is a pure tactical uh, bi-directional traders market. Uh, perfectly well suited for um, intraday and uh, intraday trading and nothing uh, uh, overnight. It's Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your powder dry and your risk measured.